Hello and welcome back to the channel. Although I should probably be saying welcome back to me rather than to you, just because it has been so long since I last posted. I had a very hectic semester. Pharmacology proved to be a lot more challenging than I originally thought it would be, which is why I didn't post any videos throughout the semester. I know that that's not ideal, and I do apologize to any subscribers who were hoping for regular content. I am going to try and make it my aim to be better from this point onwards. I've said this a few times, but sometimes you just don't know what medical school is going to throw at you. With all that said, though, I think that this is the perfect opportunity for me to discuss with you a little bit about the three biggest subjects that I've encountered in medical school, pharmacology being one of them, of course. The other two being neuroanatomy and pathology, uh, which are in the second and third year, respectively at least at the University of Pech. So it seems fitting to start with pharmacology just because it was the hurdle of the last semester and I luckily just passed it so I can give you a little bit of information about how I studied for it, what I felt was good and what I felt was maybe something I should have changed. And I want to do the same regarding the two other subjects that I mentioned, just so that if you are a current medical student who hasn't encountered these subjects yet, or you are a future medical student who is currently in high school and thinking of taking up medical school, that you just have something to think about if you were to encounter these subjects at a later point. During medical school, different subjects are going to come along that throw different curveballs at you and force you to adapt. This is not something I was particularly prepared for because I'm quite a stubborn learner. Throughout high school and starting medical school, I've always had a study method that I felt worked for me and I didn't want to hear any anything else. I was happy to stick to what I knew and what had worked for me, but I've quickly realized after maybe the first year or the first year and a half through a lot of humbling experiences that this would need to change. So I think this video is a good thing to, to talk about because I recently started a new study method for pharmacology and I think it's probably the reason as to why I passed. I tend to kind of read notes like a book and then after that, I like to go and discuss the topics with a friend who's studying it together with me and we can talk it out and do some active recall, almost in a quiz like format. And that usually tends to be enough for me. But a lot of the subjects are contextual. You can gain a lot of understanding when you read it. And then there's a few facts here and there that you need to memorize, which is fine. So when it comes to talking it out, there is actually a big concept that you can give across to someone else. But when it comes to pharmacology, it's not the same. It's quite tricky in the sense where there's a lot of individual bits of information. There are so many different drugs and you have to be able to memorize them without much detail attached to each. Of course, the essentials come attached to each drug name, such as the potential side effects that it can cause. Some of it's pharmacokinetics, which is basically what happens once you take the drug in the body. How does it absorb? How is it diffused? Does it uh, get eliminated from the body? If so, how? You will need to know specific things for each drug. Of course, you need to know what the drug treats, what category it falls under, but all of this is still very robotic. It still blocks each drug into its own separate little bubble, and it doesn't give you a greater picture. And that's why I realized quite quickly that the method that I'd been using was not gonna work, and I moved to key cards. Now, I know a lot of people use key cards, so me saying this might be really stupid because a lot of the YouTube videos out there state that Anki is the best app to use as a medical student. And maybe I'm slow to the party, but for this subject specifically, I decided to switch it up. Not exactly the same as the other medical students who promote Anki though. I decided to be a little bit more old school and go manual. So I wrote out all of my key cards and um, yeah, this, this looks very intimidating, I know, but um, this was everything for the first semester of pharmacology. So this is technically half the syllabus. And by the end of next semester, I could expect this to probably double. And you can see it next to my head. It's, it's, it's an outrageous amount. But as, as, in, as intimidating as it looks, this is just everything I need to know. And once, it's, once they were written out, which did take a pretty long time during the semester, I was just able to repeat them to the point of insanity. I feel like that's probably the only way to explain it, but it really is just going through it as many times as possible. You 
know everything one day you look at it the next day and for some reason it's it's gone and you feel blank but you just keep repeating keep repeating keep repeating and eventually by the end somehow i was able to retain a large majority of it of course it's impossible to know everything and to be fair the examiners are quite understanding of that depending on who you get for your exam this is the issue with oral exams that there's a lot of variability involved i've spoken about this in other videos where you can come out of an exam with a, a very different opinion of it than someone else just because you had a different examiner or you maybe got topics that were a little bit less prepared for i guess um i'm trying to just talk this out generally so i'm trying to be real and not over edited so hopefully i'm not losing you and this is actually coherent enough and when it comes to editing i'm not cringing i might keep this in but yeah anyway i just thought i would relate it's been a long time and i just wanted to have a sit down and chat instead of writing out a script and conveying it in a inhumane way so yeah bear with me but that's pharmacology and i don't want to go into too much detail regarding the subject just yet only because i am halfway through as i've already mentioned so i want to see if this method does continue to work for me into the next semester when the exam is cumulative and involves that whole deck i just showed you together with all the new stuff that we're going to learn so i will then be able to give a more well-rounded answer once i'm done next semester with regards to what worked and what didn't but I started the semester just reading out the notes and realized very quickly that I had to change. And I do know of some friends that didn't go down the key card route and struggled quite a bit. So based on evidence, I would say pharmacology, the only way you can do it is by doing key cards. Um, whether you want to do Anki or manual, that's up to you. I just don't really like the preface and Anki. I don't like that it tells you when you should be doing different key cards based on the algorithm. And I'm also just a bit old school and like things written down, but it, it achieves the same thing. It's basically just small bits of information on, on a loop, as much repetition as possible. Pathology, on the other hand, is a subject that actually worked based on my stubborn method. It's more contextual and more understanding based, of course, with lots of memorization as well. But I just find it a little bit more digestible i guess that's probably the word i'm looking for uh it is a lot we had to study around 500 odd pages i don't know the exact amount and the way the curriculum is set up at patch is it's quite segmented in the sense where we do each subject by itself rather than dealing with segments of the body where we look at it in every single aspect so i know of medical schools around the world that maybe will say the head let's discuss the anatomy, the embryology, let's discuss some of the pathologies to expect in the head, some of the pharmacology and how to treat it. So it's all done based on segments. At this university, it's the opposite. It's done based on the subjects themselves. So we'll do anatomy and cover everything. We'll do pharmacology and cover everything and so on and so forth. So this makes pathology quite challenging because we have to deal with every single disease that is in every single body system all at once which means that you're going to have to convey a lot of different tumors and diseases, histological findings. And that's where the uh, memorization part of the exam comes. But the good thing about it is there's quite a lot of context under each disease, under each body system. You're able to use a lot of the fundamentals that you've learned in medical school to explain your way through it. And so this is a subject that suits the style. I think you can read it a little bit like a book, that alone is not enough, but to gain the understanding and try and memorize some of the names if you can. But then I've mentioned this in I think my memorization video, it's so important to have some form of active recall. So the way it worked for me was to read it all by myself and then meet with a friend and we would reread the topic together once. Then we would get up, leave our notes, pace up and down the hallway and try and recite what we had just read as a form of active recall. And that was a very good way of of testing what we knew and knowing where we needed to focus a little bit more. And then the other thing as well is making use of mnemonics to remember some of the lists, um, lists involved, like lists of symptoms and um, different uh, aspects of diseases. And then in addition to this, it's also quite helpful to make a lot of funny stories if possible. Try and make things almost outrageous. Try and blow something up and make it almost dirty or 
anything that can help you remember. But this can all be done in communication with a friend and it makes it a lot easier for the information to stick. But yeah, that's something that really worked for me with pathology. And it was a similar case in neuroanatomy, but I had to adapt there as well. Neuroanatomy is pretty much known as the filter at our university. It is in the second year and it is a cumulative exam that involves the entirety of anatomy from anatomy one through to three. Same thing with histology and embryology. So it is three subjects all together over three semesters in one exam, which probably equates to about a thousand pages. And that is why it's so daunting. On top of that as well, the examiners tend to be quite strict. They don't give you much leeway for mistakes. Of course, you can make a few, but I think if you start making around five or so, you're already on a, on a knife's edge. So it's definitely a subject that cannot be crammed at all. You have to focus on it throughout each of those three semesters and study it thoroughly to try and give yourself the best chance. And then of course the variability comes in again where if you get the topics that you know are great. As I mentioned with pathology though, we don't deal with segments of the body holistically. So when it comes to the neuroanatomy exam, a lot of people have different ways of approaching it. Most of the people I've spoken to will study anatomy in its entirety separately from the histology and the embryology. But this is actually not something I recommend. I feel like it is way better to deal with a segment of the body holistically because it helps you to grow a bigger, better picture of what you're learning. So the way it worked for me was I coupled up with a friend and we would segment or cut the body into different pieces the head, upper region, torso, legs, you get the gist. And we would take any embryological topic that applied to that region, deal with that first. We had a TV screen up and we would watch a lot of Ninja Nerd. Shout out Ninja Nerd, his YouTube videos are very good. Also looking at a couple textbooks and the notes that we had from the university. Not the easiest subject to learn, it's quite challenging, but we would try and immerse ourselves in all the different sources that we had. And then also on our iPads, we would try and write out a lot of the steps involved, at least the main steps in the formation of a specific thing. And that would be the beginning part. So let's just say we're in the head region and we then get a lot of the embryology of the face, the ears, the how everything descends, what weak and so on, which just gives you that picture. Now we're in the frame of mind dealing, of the, dealing with the head. We then moved into the histology. If there was any histological slides to do with the brain, we would then discuss those and give us a good idea of what cells are in the region, what specific characteristics they are to, or to what specific characteristics they are to look for in those specific histological slides. And then after we got our microscopical uh, understanding sorted, we would then go macroscopically and deal with the anatomy. I think this is a far better way of studying the subject. So if your university doesn't do this already, then I would recommend altering your mindset. In addition to that tip, I really do recommend working with someone for the subject because it really helps to have someone next to you that can test you, can pull a slide up on the TV in front of you and hide the information and then see if you're able to recognize the slide and say some things about it. It, it also helps where they can maybe draw a, an anatomical picture and ask you to fill in some of the details. It even became useful with learning topics because in the last semester we were trying to memorize all of the topics that were in the two semesters just gone by and we didn't have much time to deal with the new embryology. So we split up the topics 50-50 and we would go into separate rooms and watch a Ninja Nerd video write down some notes while watching it, and then we would meet and explain to each other what we just learned. That way we almost speed up the process and half the time that it would take to understand and learn those topics. So that's another very good example of why having a partner is really good, along with all the general things as well, such as keeping you motivated and making sure that you stay on track and don't procrastinate too much. Of course, if it's the right person. There are some people that you just talk with and it's not a good match for study purposes. So make sure that you find someone who's like-minded and that you work well with. I'm gonna keep this video short. I don't wanna drag on for too long. I just wanted to make a little introductory video after a long period out to show you all that I'm back and hopefully here to stay. And 
a little bit of a message there to be able to adapt to your study style and to not be afraid to change. And in future videos, I will try and discuss a vast array of different topics, potentially diving deeper into those than I have done in this video. But hopefully you did enjoy what I provided and you're eager to see what I'm going to post next. If so, then stay tuned for the next one. And I can't even remember how I used to end my videos, but I think it was cheers. <laughs>